It's not about black and white. It's about the continuous culture uh, appropriation and falsification of history that has been done by what the so-called Afrocentrist movement. Egyptians are angry. Many people from Egypt are claiming to be the victims of a plot. A plot concocted by a mysterious group of African Americans who belong to a sect called Afrocentrism. These people are often portrayed as desperate individuals searching for identity and greatness because their own history lacks excitement. It's said that they want to claim Egypt as their own simply because it's located in Africa. At least that's what we can hear all over the media these days. But the thing is, that's why you find people like Kevin Hart, who subscribes to these theories, who claim that his ancestors play, uh, build the pyramids. I'm sorry. There has been a whole movement on this called Egypt for Egyptians with apparently young Egyptians standing to fight for their history and showing that they look just like their ancestors. Have you noticed that most of these people are extremely racist? And it seems normal for them to say all these things. They are completely against the idea of a black presence in ancient Egypt, except if it's related to slavery. But that's not a surprise when we see how Zahi Hawass talks about indigenous Africans. No, they were dark skinned, but they were not black. But they are not Negro. Mm. Because look at the, the, the lips of the, the Negroes like that and the rose like this. It's not three in the Egyptian uh, origin at all. It's different, completely different. Mm. Despite the fact that the country borders Sudan, the blackest country in the world, and to justify their claims, they use the following visuals. Especially these visuals. But to me, there is a deeper motivation behind all this uproar. So, I want you to bear with me as we discover that truth. The real reason Egyptians are fighting so-called Afrocentrists. Apparently, all this started with the polemic surrounding the new Netflix documentary about Cleopatra. But as I told you, it is actually deeper than that. These last years, there has been an awakening wave all over people of African descent in the world. Many Africans started to seriously question the narrative they've been taught about African history. They noticed that most of what we've been taught was a lie. And their voices suddenly started to be heard because their arguments made sense. And this does not please those who benefit from the lies. To maintain the people in darkness, they started this victimization campaign to gain the world's support. All this is mainly motivated by the desire to maintain the status quo and prevent the truth from emerging. The truth doesn't match their current ideals. In one of my last videos, I mentioned the importance of soft power in our world. Soft power is basically the power that comes from your peers' perception of you, from your reputation, it can impact your level of influence in the world. It can be applied at an individual level, but also at a larger scale, like in the case of a nation, a continent, or an ethnic group, for example. Usually people craft the way they want to be perceived. And usually they choose the most advantageous image based on their ideals and the power dynamics of the world around them. These ideals can also depend on who is in charge of that nation, meaning which ethnic group, for example. A nation in Scandinavia usually has completely different beauty standards than a nation in Africa. And that's normal. Beauty is subjective. It depends on cultures, locations, and many other factors. So, in the case of a nation, these factors are also dependent on who the rulers are and what are their ideals. Obviously, a country under Arab influence will have different ideals than a country under African influence. So, why am I talking about this? Today, the ancient civilization of Kemet became the Arab Republic of Egypt. The territory went through numerous invasions over the last millennia, to the point that it completely got disconnected from its original roots. The last significant one being the Arab invasion. Today, the ideals of that country look like this. while in ancient times it really looked like this so to me the true reason behind this sudden uproar is actually a deep desire to control the image of what an indigenous ancient egyptian is supposed to look like in people's minds thus controlling the narrative of kemet's origins 
Then I heard about this. An Egyptian lawyer filed a complaint against Netflix for portraying Cleopatra VII as a black woman instead of as an Egyptian. I just want to precise that this video is not about Cleopatra's ethnicity. If you want to know my opinion about that, you can watch my video about it, here. In his lawsuit, the lawyer said most of what Netflix platform displays do not conform to Islamic and societal values and principles, especially Egyptian ones. He added that in order to preserve the Egyptian national and cultural identity among Egyptians all over the world, there must be pride in the makings of such work. Well, the problem with his claims is that neither Cleopatra nor ancient Egypt was Islamic. None of the pharaohs was actually Egyptian as he says. The country was called Kenya, it was an indigenous African nation. It's obvious now that all this has nothing to do with the truth. It is due to the fact that today the country is linked to and under the influence of its latest invaders. They practiced the same culture, religion, and even named themselves the Arab Republic of Egypt. People tend to try to associate themselves with what they admire. We all love people who look like champions, winners, conquerors. They are attractive, right? And we want a bit of their light to spill over us. We secretly want to become them. And due to colonization and the destruction of the image of Africa, African soft power has deteriorated over the last millennia. So, now those who got conquered in the north are trying to detach themselves from their roots to acquire the features and the identity of their conquerors, despite sometimes clear evidence of their African roots. That's an attempt to escape from oneself, a mark of self-hatred and the manifestation of a hidden inferiority complex. A form of Stockholm Syndrome quite common among colonized populations. Therefore, the ancient African civilizations that once flourished in these areas are now automatically being linked to Arabia, the Middle East, or Europe, to the point that in most people's minds, it couldn't have been created by indigenous Africans. So, they are ready to gift the credit of these indigenous African civilizations to foreign people just to feel accepted by them. Today, the population of the region doesn't care about true history. They are just trying to project their modern ideals into the ancient civilization, which equate to falsifying history. For example, according to ancient Egyptians, their nation emerged in Inner Africa. Their gods came from and lived in Inner Africa. Their kings came from Inner Africa. And their culture also came from Inner Africa. A good example of that can be their wigs and hairstyles. They were always inspired by African hairstyles. Actually, when we look at all ancient populations' depictions, it is obvious that ancient Egyptians and Nubians belonged to the same group. But despite all evidence pointing at a black African origin, the people living in Egypt today refuse that reality and are trying to convince us, or maybe themselves, that it had nothing to do with black Africans. And they usually show these artifacts as evidence. Unfortunately, their narrative is based on a poor understanding of human mutations and history. In my last videos, I explained how everything about Kemet was linked to Black Africa. But I also explained that these elements that make us believe that there were indigenous non-Black people in Egypt are irrelevant. Among these elements, there are colored eyes. When showing these statues or selecting specific spokespersons, some modern Egyptians are trying to prove that the indigenous people of Kemet were blue-eyed and thus could only be pale-skinned individuals like them because in their minds, colored eyes are white people's features and by association being white means being superior. And their potential presence among some ancient Nile Valley Africans opens the door to a European or Levantine origin of Kemet. That logic extends to the origins of straight hair, red or blonde hair, or to a specific type of facial features usually called Caucasian features. Unfortunately, that narrative is completely false. And what I am about to tell you now will completely change the way you see our world. As soon as an individual carries any of these features, we tend to look for some non-black origin in his lineage. But, the truth is that black people with red or blonde hair exist. Black people with straight hair exist. Black people with colored eyes exist. Black people with Caucasian facial features exist. 
black people with white skin exist and they have existed prior to the emergence of those we call white people in other words it didn't necessitate any european or northern admixture to have those features that's the proof that these features have nothing to do with a so-called white origin in fact black people are actually the ones who gave these features to white people according to chak and the great african scholar there were two types of black africans those with kinky and those with straight hair but both were black however was he right in my video about Ramses II, I explained that the way we see the world today is biased. Especially because we always try to oppose black to white. And we wrongfully attribute all these features to white people, thinking that they are the ones who brought it to the world. But that's not the case. The truth is that there is no opposition to black because it is the root of us all. There is no white without black. But there has been black without the existence of white. And it has actually been the case for 99.9% .9 of the existence of the human race on this planet. It is not even a debate. So, technically, there is no white race. In a way we can say that there is only one big black race with numerous levels of melanin that we call humanity. One family with a great diversity. Most of us don't understand how the current diversity, especially the one that caused the most problems, which is skin color, emerged. Many of us still think that there was a group of white people who appeared in opposition to black people. This is what racism has created during the last few centuries. Ancient Europeans classified human beings and put those who looked like them on top of that hierarchy, attributing themselves the merit of the achievements of all indigenous melanated people who preceded them. What we have to understand is that most of these mutations started gradually and slower than we think. We've been lied to. People didn't become white with straight blonde hair and colored eyes just by magic one day. The truth is that some black people started to lose melanin in some parts of their bodies. But not all at once. It probably started with hair. Some people developed wavy hair, then straight hair. But they were still black. We can see it with Australian Aboriginals and Indians, for example. They are black with wavy, straight hair, but also kinky hair. And they have all these features without any white people's intervention. Then some people started to lose melanin in their hair. They started to be red-haired or blonde, but still with kinky hair, then with wavy and straight hair when they combined both mutations. Something that we can still observe among the people of the Solomon Islands. Then due to the climate first and for numerous other reasons later, others started to develop different facial and body features adapted to their new environments, especially cold environments, but they were still black. We can still see many people like this in Africa, but especially in India. Indians are actually black white people. They have all the features of Europeans, but they have darker skins. And finally, the last and more recent mutation that is also the one that caused the most horrifying problems, skin color. Some people started to lose melanin in their skin. And this is the main feature attributed to white people or northern people. But they actually came last, as you can see in all these studies about genetics and skin color. Prior to that, everything that existed had already been created by our dark-skinned ancestors. Civilization was associated to them, even ancient Greeks wrote about it, that's why they linked their gods to Africans, who, according to them, were the first men. So, back in the day, civilization, knowledge, power, were black people's things. And it has been that way for a very long time, even after Greece, Rome, etc. That's why in ancient temples, ancestors, or gods were usually depicted dark-skinned. At the end, with migrations, intermarriage, but also, let's be honest, invasions, and genocides, more people ended up combining all of these mutations at the same time. But at some point racist people decided to build an identity around these features to fit their terrible agenda. People must understand that pale-skinned individuals didn't reach the banks of Africa or even those of Southern Europe before very late periods. Studies prove that modern Europeans' genetic makeup only emerged around 4,000 years ago, which is around 2000 BC. And we also know that it is around the same period that white skin started to appear. 
Our 1B, which is the main lineage in Western European males, is also among the youngest lineages. In other words, everything is in perfect alignment. When these new populations reach the southern regions, black people still lived there as attested by ancient European art, and it became a huge melting pot. So, European scholars added themselves in stories that had nothing to do with them by getting the monopole of education. They created and reinforced false narratives through books, movies, illustrations, etc. This is why today, so many innocent people feel offended when they hear people say that ancient figures were black-skinned or black Africans. They fell for the propaganda and the lies. But despite these facts, scientists also proved that most of these features were not very common in Kemet and only increased after the invasions of the country. The fact that these statues were built with these beautiful stones in their eyes isn't evidence that they carried these features. We must remember that Egypt is located in a tropical area where these features were actually detrimental in an evolutionary context. To survive there, one must have had dark skin at a time when clothing was a luxury. To conclude, I want you to understand that the purpose of all this is to heal our world. It's necessary to rethink everything we know about ourselves, about humanity. It is necessary to question everything we've been taught and build a better world for us and the next generations. So, no. Egyptians are not being attacked by some despicable Afrocentrists African Americans. It's just the true story of our world that is coming to light, and it is time to make peace with it and accept that all our ancestors didn't necessarily look like what we see in movies. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. Let me know what you think about this. Do you agree or do you have another explanation? I'm open to engaging in further discussion in the comments. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the video. Thanks for watching Mr. Emodup's channel and see you in the next video.